Canary by Cloud Nine and Three Quarters. Chapter Three Fledgling Friends. Midoriya took a deep breath and stepped onto the grounds of UA. He just couldn't believe he was here at UA, the greatest hero school in all of Japan. Wait, no, no. He is not here to become a hero. He is here to learn and maybe become a paramedic. Maybe. But he might have to get over the whole muteness thing first. But he wasn't mute. Really. He keeps telling himself this, but the denial thing is starting to wear thin. At first, it was the truth. The only reason he wasn't talking was because it was just so much easier to just not say anything rather than say the wrong thing. But then it became harder and harder to get words from his brain to his mouth. And there are always so many things he wants to say, building up like water behind a dam. But that dam was getting near to impenetrable. Midoriya just hoped that one day it would burst. And when it did, it wouldn't be too dramatic and would be for all the right reasons. That's not too much to ask. Right? Right. Anyway. UA. Clutching tightly onto the yellow straps of his backpack, Midoriya hurried towards the school. There were so many people there. They were all so excited, ducking loudly to friends new and old, wondering what this new year would bring. Class 1C. Class 1C. Class 1C. Where are you? Wow, that's a big door. Are all the homerooms like this? They have to be. They wouldn't do something like this for a general studies class and not for a Euro class. I wonder what Gachan's class will be like, Midoriya pondered. He let the door slide open and hurried inside, trying not to make eye contact with any of his new classmates. He didn't want to get off to a bad start. Just stay quiet, keep your head down, and everything's going to be okay. Midoriya found his name tag sitting on a desk near the window. It had a clip on the back of it. He glanced around to see some of the others were wearing theirs, so their name was displayed loud and clear to anyone who wanted to know it. Midoriya supposed he should do the same. Yeah, yeah! I was so sure I'd flunked it. I was kind of surprised when I got my acceptance letter after freaking out about it all so much. He looked up at the conversation occurring across the room. Most of his other classmates were standing together, discussing the exams they'd taken to get in. Who was that one on hero laws? Like, I guess this is a hero school primarily, but come on. Like, we were supposed to know all that junk. This is general studies, not how to be a hero 101 or whatever, complained a grumpy-looking blonde girl with straight blonde hair fiddling with her name badge. Sumiye Ochi. That one was okay. I was more stumped on the thing about quirklessness, said the girl next to her. She had cat ears. I didn't even know people could still be carkless, added another. Hey, bored looking guy, what did you think of the exam? Questioned the first. Suddenly everyone was looking at Midoriya. Oh my, oh no, I'm going to have to speak. What if they ask if I'm quirkless? What if... It was all right, I guess. Midoriya let out a sigh of relief. They were talking to the guy sitting behind him with heavy eye bags and a head of purple hair. Then they turned to Midoriya. What about you? Fortunately enough, no reply was necessary because seconds later the door was thrown open, cutting into their conversation spectacularly. Good morning, the listeners! It was present Mike. Midoriya thought he'd be able to not fanboy over every single one of his teachers. But it's President Mike! His homeroom teacher was President Mike! Midoriya listened to his radio show every day of the week. It didn't seem like the rest of his class were as enthusiastic as Midoriya was. Then again, Midoriya didn't exactly make that much of a fuss out loud as they got to their respective seats in not much of a hurry. Well done! to UA's general study guards, the voice hero exclaimed. I'm your homeroom teacher, President Mike. You might have heard of my radio show, and if you haven't, you should totally go check it out. Midoriya saw Ochi roll her eyes from across the classroom. She certainly wasn't much of a hero fan. But anyway, before we begin orientation, it's time to take our very first roll call. Are you ready? No one replied. 
By the end of the year, you will be replying to that, he insisted. His new class didn't seem very convinced. Midoriya certainly wasn't. When he started to call out names, Midoriya began to panic again. But the register ran much faster than he expected, and he didn't even have time to let his brain whir into overdrive before his name was called out. Izuku Midoriya! President Mike announced like he just won a prize. Midoriya did nothing but shakily raise his hand. Ah, yes! said President Mike. You know JSL, Midoriya! He nodded frantically. He had learned Japanese sign language with his mother. She said that if talking ever got too difficult, he could at least resort to a nonverbal communication. He had been reluctant, but eventually complied. Midoriya had always had a knack for learning things like that. Words, dates, facts, and figures. They all neatly organized themselves in his head, even if they didn't often come out. Are you okay with me telling everyone that you're mute? President Mike signed at a remarkable speed with over-exaggerated hand gestures. Midoriya hesitated, but supposed he had no choice other than to nod. His brain-to-mouth communication just didn't seem to be working today. Okay, everybody! Just to give you a heads up, Midoriya here is selectively mute, so he's basically the opposite of me. There's no pressure to speak around here, Midoriya. Just come to me if you have any questions, because I know Japanese and American Sign Language! Unsteadily, Midoriya managed to send a reply. I know ASL too. What? Are you fluent in English? Midoriya flinched, although he supposed that wasn't too big of a jump to make. He nodded. Of course, his father had often spoken English to him at a young age. It had been over the phone, as he was rarely able to meet his family face to face, but the regular video calls had been enough to ingrain the language in Midoriya's brain. President Mike pointed at Midoriya dramatically. New favorite student! You not better catch up quick! Midoriya blushed furiously and shaggy into his hair. Okay, moving swiftly forwards, can we get a yeah from Hitoshi Shitsu? The guy with purple hair behind Midoriya glared at the teacher menacingly. He caved after about a second. Yeah. How about a more enthusiastic one from... Maggie Matsumoto? Yeah? Close enough! There was a silent agreement across the classroom. This was the start of three long years. And how right they were. For all the wrong reasons. All right, listeners! We are five minutes late for orientation, so follow me! Midoriya would have made sure everyone else left before him, but Shinso seemed to have exactly the same idea, and Midoriya didn't want to get on the wrong side anymore. And this Shinso was certainly near the top of his list. His silence and hard glare just seemed to scream, Stay away from me! Or else. The first years were ushered to an assembly point just outside the school's main building. Midoriya was quick to notice that they were positioned in order of class, from 1H all the way up to 1A. Wait, no, 1B. Class 1A was nowhere to be seen. It must have been Makugo's class, considering Midoriya couldn't spot his head of spiky blonde hair anywhere amongst the other heroics class 1B. Greetings to you all, proclaimed Principal Nezu. Midoriya watched the creature's beady eyes drift over the new student body as he spoke, the speech was long and tedious, revolving mainly around the promise within them and what good they could do for their world. Midoriya thought back to his acceptance letter. He had kept it and pinned it up on the wall next to his All Might poster. He hadn't said a word about his quirklessness being a disadvantage. In fact, the principal had held his condition at equal importance to his muteness. Midoriya didn't know what it meant to him quite yet, or perhaps what it would mean for his future at UA... But, despite what he'd heard about Nezu, despite all the comments of how frightening he was, Midoriya couldn't help but look up at him with more trust than he'd placed in any other teacher he'd made an acquaintance with. He could have sworn the principal's eyes lingered on Midoriya's green ones for a moment. They had never met face to face, but surely he could have found a picture of him somewhere. The corkless mute student with the highest marks across the year. Yet yeah, that wouldn't be at all surprising. After the assembly was over, the departments were taken around the school separately for a brief tour. 
Of course, General Studies didn't need to know where any of the specialized heroics rooms were, nor the support classes. They were shown the cafeteria, where Recovery Girl's office was, where the changing rooms and gym were. Finally, when Class 1D separated from Class 1C, President Mike led them back to their homeroom, where Midoriya was reunited with his precious bag, which he had been thinking about this entire time. Of course, UA wasn't like his old school. He knew he wouldn't return to find it reduced to a mere pile of ash, but no one would blame him for being cautious. So, we have reached our intermission! I.E. Lunchtime! President Mike announced. I know! We spent the entire morning listening to Nezu, and trust me, it never gets old! His smile was rather fixed at this point. You lot know your way down to the lunch hall now, so you can head off whenever you want. In the meantime, I have to go and listen to Nezu again in our annual first day staff meeting and find out if I want my bet. There's no way Eraser Ed hasn't expelled anyone yet, and I'm gonna be the first to find out if he has! See you later, little listeners! And with that, he was gone. Instantly, chatter amongst his new classmates broke out around him. Midoriya had much preferred the silence. Okay, so I was talking to the people in class 1D, and I couldn't find who ever had that 91%. Midoriya heard Ochi tell their new friends. He frowned at the revelation. 91%? Were they talking about the entrance exams still? Who managed to get 91%? Uh, wait. Wait, that's me. So, whoever it is must be in our class, concluded a boy with darker skin and spiky brown hair. His name tag read Goro Tachibana. Midoriya got up quickly. There was no way he was going to waltz up to them and say, Yep, that's me! Because, number one, he'd have to actually say that, and he was almost positive none of them knew sign language. And number two, he'd really prefer to avoid the attention at this point. Or at any point in the near future. He scurried out of the classroom as quickly as he could, taking his bag with him, only to walk right into purple-haired Shinso, who seemed to have the same idea when it came to prompt evacuation from any and all social situations. Sorry, Midoriya quickly signed, fully aware that he wouldn't understand. He hoped that at least he'd register the hand movements as an obvious attempt at an apology. Don't worry about it. Midoriya stared at him. Shinso couldn't... Sign? He'd spoken the words as he signed them, so logically he had no problem with speaking or hearing. Midoriya didn't know what to think. There were about a dozen different questions he wanted to ask. Well, sign. But before he could attempt any of them, Shinzo walked away, not giving him a second glance. Midoriya's mind raced. Shinzo clearly wanted him to know that he understood sign, or else he wouldn't have bothered speaking and signing his response. He hadn't been cruel in any way and was clearly as averse to social interaction as Midoriya was, or at least he was on the first day of school. You coming? Shinto called back. He hadn't stopped or turned around to meet Midoriya's gaze, but it was clear that he was still speaking to him. He's speaking to me, thought Midoriya. It took a moment, but just before he disappeared around the corner, Midoriya grasped tightly onto the strap of his backpack like it was the only thing tethering him to the earth and ran after his classmate. Midoriya stayed behind him as they walked to the cafeteria. Not a word was uttered between them, sign or otherwise, as they lined up for food. It was only when they reached the front of the line that Shinso spoke again. What are you going to eat? He asked, turning Midoriya. He asked, turning to Midoriya to see his reply. He hesitated, glancing at the menu in panic. He had been so busy thinking about all the possible reasons for Shinso wanting to interact with him that he'd completely forgotten that he was lining up for lunch, which he would have to order out loud. I'm not p particularly hungry. He signed. Midoriya's hand movements were so jerky that it could really only be translated as a stutter. Maybe just s s some white rice? We reached the front of the queue. Can we have two bowls of white rice? Shinso asked Lunch Rush. He indicated at Midoriya in a way of letting him know that he was ordering for the two of them. 
Midoriya was so stunned that Shinso was actually helping him that he didn't even freak out over the pro hero lunch rush or acknowledge their brief conversation about white rice being a wonderful comfort food. Shinso didn't even look at Midoriya again until they had accepted their food and paid when he was double checking that Midoriya was still, well, alive and that he was following him to a small table as far away from everyone else as he could find. Thank you. Midoriya told Shinso as soon as he had put down his tray on the table. Shinso just shrugged, sat down, and started to eat. Midoriya followed suit. The two ate in silence for a while before Midoriya couldn't take it any longer. He tapped his chopsticks on the side of his bowl to get Shinso's attention, which took a couple of attempts. What did you learn sign language? He could have asked how or when or more usefully why, but for some reason it came out as where. From the internet, he replied simply. Sometimes it's easier to just not speak. Midoriya stared at him again. He'd been doing that a lot over the short time that they'd known each other. I was never mute, Shinso added after a moment's thought. It never got that far, but I thought sign language would be useful. It lets people know that I won't do anything to them. Midoriya frowned, his confusion clearly displayed across his face. It's my quirk, he continued. It's a villain's power. No quirk is a villain's quirk unless the holder is themselves a villain, Midoriya insisted. Shinzo scoffed. It's brainwashing, he signed. I ask a question, out loud. If someone replies, then I have complete control over them. Midoriya blinked at him. But that's an amazing quirk! I'd love to have a power like that. You could so easily become a great hero with it. You really think so? Midoriya nodded frantically before taking another mouthful of rice. It was awfully difficult to eat and sign. He would have gone on a tangent about all the good he could do with it if he had a few more hands. But his mother had often said that his muttering didn't translate well into sign. He always went too fast for anyone to understand. Well then, you'd be the first. Shinso smiled. I'd love to have a quirk like that, Midoriya insisted. I would have gone straight to the hero course if I could. I failed the entrance exam, Shinso told him blankly. They used robots. Mind control doesn't work on robots. That's rather unfair. Yeah. Wait, didn't you take it too? You said you would have gone to the hero course if you could. Midoriya hesitated. He wasn't planning on letting anyone know, but Shinso had been so kind to him. Then again, it made him even more afraid that he'd turn away. Um, quirkless. It was Shinso's turn to stare now. He stayed like that for a couple of minutes as Midoriya's cheeks flushed red and his brain filled his head with fog made of doubts and the unmistakable fear of abandonment. You're the guy with 91%, aren't you? And now Midoriya was staring again. How did you- I bet you waste that question on quirklessness. Shinso grinned as he finished his rice. I would say it's unfair, but then again, no one would be complaining if it was an essay on some kind of disease that I happened to have once and therefore knew more about it. He wasn't even referring to quirklessness as a disease. He even confirmed that seconds later. I did I didn't think you were, Midoriya insisted. Are you going to keep everyone in the dark about you being the local genius? She had just marked. I'm not a genius. Sure you're not, mister. I flew it in English and JSL and ASL, got the highest score in the theoretical tests across all departments, and is already a teacher's favorite student. Midoriya. And now Midoriya was blushing again. A profound realization washing over him. He had a friend.